share some of our experience in Latin America, uh, working with responses, um, and during the sessions, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, sorry for our English, and we'll do our best to to communicate and to make ourselves uh, understand. Um, and we will present uh, some of the main topics that we would like to cover uh, and if there is anything, any other topic that you would like to see, maybe we can discuss during the breaks, during the, the, the lunch time and if we have some, some training material we can put it uh, in the presentations uh, for tomorrow and, and, and Wednesday, so um, we would like to, to have a very open and we, we want to communicate with you and asking questions. It, it's better for us if the audience can participate. Uh, it's, it makes more uh, rich and we can share more experience, okay? Uh, this is the safe and efficient blasting uh, for open cut mining and quarrying. We'll talk a little bit about uh, underground operations, but uh, we, we understand that's not the, the main focus. Thank you. Uh, first of all, to present myself, uh, my name is Andres Bikini. I'm a mine engineer. I work for ICA for more than 16 years. Uh, I also have a post-graduation in safety engineering. Uh, so it's very useful to, to have both knowledges, the practical and the theoretical in the explosive, the blasting side, and also the safety because it's really important to have safe uh, operations in, in, in mining and quarrying. Uh, Victor, if you want to present yourself. Hi everyone. As Andres said, it's a pleasure to be here with you today and for the next couple of days. Um, I'm a mining engineer as well. I have almost 10 years of experience in which seven of these years was working with Orica. Andrea is my boss in Brazil, so I better, better get a good presentation with him here. <laughs> All right, and, uh, and I have a geotechnical background as well as a post-graduation. So I hope during these two days, uh, we can listen from you guys a little, a little of your experience and share with you our experience we have back in Brazil and some other countries. Thank you. As we always do uh, when starts, uh, it's important uh, for us to understand the emergency exits. If, if something happens here, we do that in the mining sites, in the blasting area. So it's important here also to understand where to go. We have the, the, the exit. If something happens and if we have an emergency, we go there, we go downstairs, not, not using the elevator. It's better to use the, the stairs and we get out of the building if something uh, happens in, in, in this meeting room. Uh, there, are, there are toilets outside. If we understand that if we have an important call from your, your work, please feel free to, to take a phone and, and answer it uh, outside the room. It's no problem. I don't know the rules for smoking. I don't know if it's allowed or not to smoke in, in, in this area. Is it? But if anyone smokes, please go outside. It's very dark. This is my contact, this is Victor's contact. If you need further information, if you have any question, anything you want to know, not related with this session, maybe with the market, please feel free to contact us, to contact Dave and, and uh, through the authorities that uh, presented here first. <coughs> Just to understand the background of you, how many of you have uh, more than two years of experience in, in mining industry or in the quarry industry. And 
more than five years, more than ten years. Okay. We will present the agenda, how we, we intend to do the sessions, uh, the breaks. Everybody uh, has a workbook, a, a printed workbook for you to, to, to have. It's very complete. There, the, the book has some, uh, a lot of material that you, if you need, you can go deeper and understand, understand in each topic. Um, it's impossible to cover all the book in, in two and a half days. So we'll give here a, a, a big picture of every, of the most relevant aspects of blasting. But with the book you can go and study deeper, right? And if you have any question uh, regarding uh, some topic of the book, please get in touch with, you, with, with us. And the assessment and the certificates, uh, after the, the end, we can uh, send you a certificate of the, the session. The main objectives, and, and here, uh, if there is anything that you would like to see that is not here, we can uh, talk a little bit, and if we have time, and if we have material, we can include it for the next two days. We will explore the types of explosives, the explosives properties and, and hazards. It's important to deal uh, with, this, with explosives uh, with safety. How these properties affect rock, so we will understand how this, the, the, the detonation process works and how, it's, uh, uh, how it, the energy use, is used to, to, to break rock. Minimizing risks by dealing with explosives. Ways of being smarter. Uh, and, and here we can, we can find the right balance between cost, energy, what fragmentation you need, vibration controls, how to be smart and, and use the, the explosives the best they can deliver safe, safely. And some latest ideas to be tried, some of new technologies, uh, what's going on in the, in the industry, in the markets, something new. This is the, the, the agenda we, we started at eight, so we need to to fit the agenda due to this uh, first introduction uh, of all the authority, we need to, to adjust it. If we don't have time today to cover all these topics in the first day, we can move to, to day two and then we adjust. So, there is a, this is the brief introduction. We'll start with the explosives properties. I'm sorry, this slide is in Portuguese. This is the only one, I guess. And the explosive selection, priming and charging, how to, to do that in, in the field, how to use it in the field. Uh, initiation systems, we talk about detonators, detonating cords, non-electric detonators. So it's, a, it's a, a big part of the, the program, talking about the first one of explosives and the second uh, we talk about the initiation systems. And then we'll talk, it, this topic maybe, if according to the, uh, the speed, maybe this one we can leave, uh, this is the electronic blasting system, or maybe we can give a brief overview not going deeper. Blasting design and geometry, how to prepare your blast, all the parameters, uh, the geometry, how to prepare a blast plan, and how to prepare the loading plan. Explosives and rock interaction, how to choose the best explosive according to the type of rock, the hardness, uh, density, and all the aspects related to the nature, to what you want to do with the rock. 
do a blast optimization after the selection, then you, you, you need to move forward to the next step, how we can optimize it, how we can improve the fragmentation, how we can control, better control the vibrations, fly rock in quarries that may be close to the neighbors, to a city, uh, you need to prevent some undesired events by optimizing your, your, your blast. Special blasting techniques, something more advanced, depending on, on how you blast. Uh, maybe uh, you have some uh, civil works, you need to, to blast a big piece of rock in, in the city, for example. We will talk about some special blasting techniques. All the environmental controls, which is very important. Sometimes you blast uh, close to some uh, structure that you need to, to prevent any accident, an old church, uh, roads, uh, some uh, relevant buildings, or even something in, in the nature, some, something in, in a protected area that you need to preserve. Regulations, storage and safety, if we have time, we are not specialists in the rules of each country, so we'll give a an overview of, of how it works in, in places we know, the, the regulations, but you are the, the, the best uh, team to talk about this, about the regulations. Some, some, some countries, the regulations are with the police or with the army or with uh, any other uh, uh, company. We need to discuss a little bit more to understand how it works here in the area. Right? If there is something that you, you would be expecting that is not covered during the, the breaks, during the lunch time, we can talk and, and we can find some material to add to the presentation, okay? By the end of this course, you will understand the properties of explosives that cause them to be hazard. Uh, the reasons why blasting results can change so much. Maybe you do the same process, we have a, an excellent blasting, and in the sequence, the next blast is awful. Why, why this can happen? the safest and most efficient way of completing a task with explosives, from the beginning of planning the blast uh, to, to, to the results. We invite you to participate, share your experience, ask questions. Uh, there is no uh, question that, uh, don't be shy about asking questions, please. Every question is, is important, is relevant offer ideas uh, and let's share our blasting uh, problems so we can uh, get to a uh, common point together, okay? We promise that you will learn at least two things about handling explosives safer and two things about working with explosives smarter. So, Something to, to get started about some terms, some, some parameters, uh, blast geometry. When, when we are in a mine or in a quarry, we use some wordings, typical in, in the mine. Bench. So we have the bench top, <coughs> burden and spacing, both some uh, relevant parameters. When you when you start preparing a blast design, you need to understand the burden effect and the spacing to, to prepare your, your blasting uh, properly. The blast hole. <coughs> 
where you drill, you put the explosives inside. Blast hole collar is the, the, the top of the blast hole. Uh, hole angle, some miners prefer to, to drill angled holes and some other miners prefer to, to drill uh, vertical blast holes. It depends on a lot of parameters of, of what you need. If you need uh, a, a, a mud pile to be uh, looser uh, or, or tighter, you prepare the, the, the blast angle differently. Stelling is the part of material, uh, some, some inner material that you use to confine the explosive. It's important uh, for first, for safety. When the explosives fire, it will move uh, to the weaker part of the roster. If you have a free face here, but no standing, the explosive will prefer to go to the easier part. So it will get out of the blast hole by the collar. And, and it can split some rocks up. And if you have some problems, some houses, some buildings close, you need to put the standing, a good standing. First, first reason for safety. Second reason for to, to confine the explosive inside the blast hole. You see that every explosive performs better if the confinement is good. You have the free face. It's important to have a free face when the hole uh, is when the explosive is fired. The energy will uh, draw the rock the easiest part, to the preface direction, right? You need to be very cautious about some cavities. There are some uh, events of fly rock coming from these cavities, where the, burn, the, the, the distance between the explosives and the preface is too small, that generates a, a big amount of energy per meter of rock, and it can throw up to an undesired place outside the, the, the last siege. And the crest, when the blasters are here in the bench top loading, the, loading explosives, it's really important to be aware of where the crest is. Some miners use some piles of rock to avoid people to fall to the lower edge. Um, some places they, they sign uh, with bones or with uh, ink in the, in, the, in the field. So this is basically the, the term that we use uh, uh, on bench. Rock pile. When we blast, we have the mud pile profile here, right? Uh, depending on the, the, the performance of the blasting, in terms of fragmentation, you can find oversized, big blocks. Uh, for some applications, it's okay to have big blocks. When, we are, when, when you are blasting uh, big material to, to move deviate a river, for example. You need these big blocks. It's important. So this can be desirable. But in, in most of the cases, big blocks are undesirable, right? You have uh, difficulties to excavate, to put in trucks to transport. Uh, so it's not, not, not very good to have oversized. Another issue is generating those, and how it, it, how it can happen. There is a combination of the joints and the depth of the, the blast holes. If the blast hole is too short, you have not uh, uh, enough energy to break this rock here, and you generate a uh, dough, and it makes uh, 
more difficult for excavators to load uh, a mud pile. Backbreak. It can be generated by excess of energy. Uh, if you select a very uh, powerful explosives and, and not fit to the, the, the rock properties, you can generate backbreak. If your blast design, the geometry, is, is not that good if you need to have a big burden, a big distance, so the explosives don't have enough energy to move rock forward, the energy goes backwards. So we have this kind of uh, problem. Also the joints, it can be favorable or unfavorable depending on how you blast, how you, you design uh, the fire movement. That's it. And, and, and power through is, it's better to have the mud pile, uh, the, the throw, the cast, uh, good enough for the loading machines. And, and it will depend on the equipment you have in the, the mine or in the quarry. If you have a, a, a front loader, maybe a, a, a shorter mud pile is better. If you have an excavator, uh, maybe a, a higher mud pile, mud pile is better, depends on the, the equipment you have. So you, you, you need to consider also, when you are, when you be designing the blast, what, what the objectives you have. You have to be aware of the fragmentation, vibration, wall damage, mud pile, uh, for the equipment to be more productive. productive. This is something we talked about, what we are looking for in a good blast. A good blast depends on, on, on the objective that you, you have. Why don't we always achieve this? You see here, in a typical party or in a typical mine, a lot of operations going on together. You may be facing some misfires problem. Problem with products, problems with applications, uh, damage in, in any product or during the operation. And you can have a misfire. The design is important. If you design, if your designs are good, probably you have a good blast. But if your design is, is, is poor, the results. You, you cannot expect so good results. The initiation, uh, this is related to the energy. Each explosive needs a, a, a type of initiator to fire properly. So it's something related to the sensitivity, the ability of explosives to fire and to continue uh, detonating in, in, the, in the column, for example. Costs. If you are struggling with costs and you go and look only the price of explosive, you select the explosive by the price and not by the uh, properties, maybe you, will, you can use uh, not the proper explosive to the, to the rock. So this may be a, a limitation of the blast. Computers, some, some designs, uh, there, there are a lot of softwares in the market to optimize blasts. It's not necessarily uh, something so relevant, but if you have tools to help you design properties, better. Special designs, sometimes you need to, to fire uh, a trench or these big rocks that are in the, in the side of the mine for a long time. So you need to be aware of special designs. Results, depending on the, on the objective. Safety is always a concern. So everything here needs to be done uh, in a good manner. So you cannot uh, have any incident.
just to get a, a, an overview from you, uh, let's pretend we have acquired an old, an old mine. And the mine, the mine hasn't worked for more than a year. And when you arrive, you find a mess. A shot, a blast that had clearly misfired and has left poorly breaking ground with evidence of unfired explosives. You need to fix it. I'd like to ask, not, not to mean a, a workshop or something, Separating groups, but I want to listen from you uh, ideas. How to deal with that? What we need to do to start to clean to clean this, this mess? Any idea? Go Michelle. You find a misfire. There is a plastic see part of explosives and you are sure that there was a misfire, something wrong happened. So how to deal with that? Secure the area. Good. You, make, you, you need to be sure that no one gets to the area. Something could happen. Um, Very appropriate. <laughs> So you would want to get the information of the pattern that you set up prior to doing anything. Excellent. You need to understand what happened. Anyone else? There are, there are many ways to deal with that. Uh, first concern needs to be safety. Uh, before we start re-drilling, you need to understand what happened, where the blast holes were, if you have uh, your reference positions of each blast hole polar, for example, to avoid the drilling rigs to, to drill exactly the same blast hole, it's really dangerous, right? Uh, you need to see if there, there are parts of rock that can be excavated, the mass, excavating, loading the fragments, pieces of rock. Uh, sometimes you can use water. If you know that you use the, an explosive uh, uh, not uh, sensitive to water, if you use ANCO, for example, you will see that ANCO is not water re resident. It, it, it absorbs water. So if you want to be sure that this explosive won't fire, water, wash it. If you can find the, the detonators, take a look on the top of the bench if you can find some detonators. Maybe it's possible to uh, fire it again, to tie and fire it again if you see that uh, no risks for flywheel. Okay, so that's the end of the, the part one. So we must have the selection.
for five minutes. Fifteen minutes. To the break. Uh, let's talk about uh, the explosive uh, properties. Mm, this, this will give a, a, a foundation for you guys to understand how the explosives uh, fire properly. Uh, how they can be initiated properly. The amount of energy necessary uh, to fire it properly. This, this is basically the initiation. This is a package, a, a cartridge, a package explosive. It was initiated here. You see uh, uh, where the detonator should be. The detonators, uh, the detonator initiated the explosives, and this is the chain reaction. The detonation is moving this direction. So you have a lot of energy moving to all directions, right? You will see that there are two basic types of energy, the shock energy and the gas energy. And the explosive has these two main properties. You will see in detail uh, in advance. The, the, the detonation is a chemical reaction. It's like making a, a, a barbecue, right? You need the fuel, you need oxygen, and you need to keep the reaction going on and on and on. So you need this, this triangle, right? The oxygen, the fuel, and in the case of explosive, the heat and detonating pressure. And, and this to happen, you need some sensitizers. The explosive needs these sensitizers. You will see what is it and, and how to sensitize an explosive. So you need to think about these three uh, parts and if nothing happens, maybe this part is not good enough. You need to be aware of the sensitivity of each explosive. Okay? It, here in, in, this, um, in this picture, it's representing the starting point where we put the primer, for example, the detonator and the booster. We will see the, 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 these products more, uh, more in more detail. When we start the blast, this is the, the wave moving through the explosive column or, to, or through the, the cartridge. Every explosive needs to be sensitized with these bubbles, these gas bubbles or air bubbles, or even some, some explosives uses uh, glass bubbles with air inside. These bubbles can be physical, like these glass bubbles, or chemical, a chemical reaction between some some products that creates gas bubbles, nitrogen, oxygen. Something needs to be here to sensitize the, the, the mass of explosives. And the shock wave, when it passes through the, each bubble, it generates the hot spot. It allows the detonation process to move on, the chain reaction. So, the sensitizer is responsible for the chain reaction to keep the detonation moving through the explosive, through the explosive column in a, in a blast hole, right? If there's something wrong here, the detonation can be interrupted and you have a misfire. Okay. So we, we say this, this uh, term hotspot for every tiny bubble of air or gas that we have to sensitize 
the explosion. Right? It's a process of passing the ball, a chain reaction. One hot spot gives enough energy to the next hot spot, and the ball is, is passing through the, the explosion. The primary, this, this represents, uh, for example, a glass hole uh, charged with explosive. You have a primer in the bottom of the hole, and it starts here, and the chain reaction, reaction moving up the hole. Some problems. In a blast, where we have two blast holes, sequence for a, in a quarry or in a mine, uh, you generally, generally use delays, not to fire all the blast holes together at the same time, but we use some surface delays to make the, the, the blasting sequence not to be so aggressive to the ground and to allow the rock to move one blast hole after another, another, another. You prepare a, a, a sequence to improve the fragmentation, improve the magpile growth, reduce migration. But something can happen. Maybe if the distance is too short, you have this first blast hole firing first, and the energy is so high that this cartridge, for example, can be desensitized. Huh? Desensitized, is that correct word? Desensitized, right? The energy destroys the hot spots, the bubbles, and the energy passed through the, the explosive in the next hole, it destroys and desensitizes the, the explosives. And then you can have a misfire here. When you fire the blast hole, this one is okay, but this one is damaged. So you you have a misfire. You 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 find explosives in the fire, not fire. It happens when you have a lot of water in the ground. Uh, when the rock is very, uh, you you have a lot of joints. It can be uh, favorable for the this type of uh, issue. And the design, if the blast holes are too close other, the timing between the blast holes can affect, and the energy. If you have a, a, a very powerful uh, explosive, it can damage the, the rhythm, okay? As, as uh, the explosives have uh, uh, an important property uh, that the, 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 the reaction is very, very fast and violent. So, uh, for example, one liter of explosives, for example, if you, if you use one liter of a, a kind of explosive, it will be transformed very, very quickly when fired properly in a thousand liters of gas. So imagine oh, one liter, or it's approximately one kilo of explosive will become a thousand liters of gas. So imagine one blast hole, when it's fired, suddenly becomes a thousand liters of gas. This gas needs to go out of this blast hole. So it will move through the, the the joints in the rock and move it so to create the mud pile. This is the basic the, the basic uh, throw process, right? This is called the gas energy. Every explosive have the the shock energy and the gas energy. So we have the total energy of the explosive. The shock energy creates new cracks in the rock. So if you have a granite or limestone or a very hard rock, 
it's better to select one explosive with high shock energy to generate new cracks in the rock. And the next energy is the gas energy. So if you generate new cracks, the gas energy will go through these new cracks and move the rock forward, generating your mud pile. So you need to combine these two energies with the type of rock, the, the type of uh, mythology, the hardness, the joints. You need to select the best combination that fits to the rock type. Further on, we will talk about of, uh, relative bulk strength. When we compare different products, we use this parameter, the most used parameter. And it means that if you have a glass hole with a, a, a known diameter, uh, three inches, three and a half inches diameter, and we you load it with uh, maybe two meters stemming and ten meter column, for example, you have a volume of explosive there. If you change it and put another type of explosive, you can compare the relative bulk strength. It's always compared with the energy of the anvil. The anvil is uh, has the 100 RBS, and all the explosive you compare with anvil. If you are using a bulk emulsion or a blended emulsion, all types of explosives you can put in a and compare to anvil using this parameter, okay? Shock energy affects fragmentation. Gas energy, rock pile looseness and instability. This is very relevant. Blast effects. You have gunpowder here in a steel plate. What do you think it will happen if you initiate this gunpowder? What happens with the steel plate? Will it break? Nothing happens. What do you think? There's no wrong answer. Nothing happens. Just learn. Nothing happens with these two plates. Ampho. Do you know what's, what ampho means? Who knows? Who, who, who can tell what, what the word ampho means? Ammonium nitrate, fuel oil. So it's a mixture between uh, 95, 96, 94% of ammonium nitrate and 6% of fuel oil, so you will have the most used explosive in the world. If you initiate ampho here, of course it depends on the thickness of the fuel plate, right? Affect explosive. So, this effect is basically relating to the pressure, to the detonating pressure, right? So, as higher the pressure, the higher the pressure, the most damage will be uh, in, in the steel plate, for example. And this is a real case, a booster on a steel plate. A 400 gram booster in a 10 millimeter thick fuel plate. Look at the damage. And basically, the diameter is the same diameter of the, the booster, right? So, the booster, uh, the, the components, the chemical components of the booster, they have the higher detonating pressure. So, it will generate the, the, the the worst damage 
On the, on the diameter of the blast hole, you put a, a, a bigger booster or a smaller booster, depending on the energy you need to initiate the explosive column. Um, it's typically a cylinder when you put the detonator, and then you go and, and, and put inside the blast hole, so the booster will initiate the explosive uh, column, right? Uh, typically, a booster can, can have 150 grams, 250 grams, 450 grams to a kilo, depending on the diameter of the blast hole. Deep mining operations like iron ore, gold, they drill with bigger diameters, so typically you use a bigger booster, one kilo. In quarries, the diameter is two and a half inches, three inches, three and a half inches, four inches, you use smaller booster. Right. So we are here considering a, a, a detonation. We saw that we have the, the, the gas energy and the shock energy. But you lose a lot of energy when you fire. Most part of the, the energy is, is going to the environment as fly rock. The rock flies to an undesired location. You are losing energy here. Gas ejection, if, if the rock is so fractured, so cracked, maybe the gas energy can escape. Air blast. The same here, the same phenomenon. Air blast. When you, you listen to a big noise, you see, you, you understand that somehow you lose part of the energy. Heat. The explosive fire, the rock uh, heats. Vibrations. It's not desirable to have vibrations. Could fire explosives without creating vibrations? Excellent, but it's impossible. Overbreak. It's not good to have overbreak in, in your walls. You lose stability. It's difficult to, to drill the next blast. So you use the energy to fragment to, for fragmentation and for cracking. Is, is the smallest part. So you need to control these undesirable effects to use more and more the energy for your purpose, for fragmentation and cracking. And here, basically, is what you need to consider to select the proper explosive. Physical properties, which explosive is, is that? Water resistance, am I using the explosive in a rainy area or if the glass holes are full with water or not, or we are talking about dry holes? Critical diameter. Depends on the drilling machine you have, right? If it's a new operation, you can design the drilling uh, fleet according to your blasting needs. But typically, the mine is there, the, or the quarry is there, and they have already purchased the drilling, and you need to use them. So, which explosive should I use according to the diameter? Sensitivity. Like we mentioned before, temperature effects. We are, it's difficult to work here or in Brazil in, in, in 
hot weather, but very rainy. Then working in Canada or uh, in the snow, very different conditions. Price, energy, strength, storage life. If you are in a very remote location and you need to storage the explosive for a long time, can you do that? Do the explosive lose, lose the, the, the physical properties? Detonation velocity, fuse, density. Okay. We we'll talk about each parameter now. Water resistance. From poor to good, this is basically the water resistance. Unfold. As some of you know, Unfold is a mixture is a, a, of pills, no grains of uh, ammonium nitrate that you mix with few oil. So you have, you have a product uh, that you can pour in, in, in the glass holes, right? Uh, it can be in bags, it can be by trucks. But it's, it has a, has a very poor water resistance. It absorbs water. So if you are firing glass holes, in wet conditions, be careful. There are some equipment that you, you can use to water, pump out the, the water from, from the glass holes, and then you load the explosive, put the stand, tie, and fire. But you need to be fast, or else the water comes back to the glass hole, right? Heavy info. And the ampoule is a mixture of unfold and emotions. The emotions, you see further, are the same product, chemically speaking, but it passes through uh, uh, an emulsification process. You put some chemical at that uh, to, to give water resistance. It's similar to a uh, mayonnaise. Similar to a mayonnaise, right? And you can pump with trucks, you can pump into the holes, or you can put in the cartridge. So, if, for those who, who have opened uh, a cartridge of explosive, the emotion is the, the, this product. So, when you go up to the pumped emotions, packed emotions, the boosters and the detonator you have the better uh, water resistance. Okay. For each product, you can see the catalogs and in the, in, in the technical data sheet, every product has the specifications of water resistance. Sleep time. Sleep time is the time that the manufacturers recommend that you can load the blast hole and wait to, to blast. Some blasts are quite big in some mines, and it takes a week, two weeks to load all the blasts. So the explosives and the accessories need to be resistant to water. They, they need to be there, loaded in the blast hole for one week, two weeks, without losing the, the, the properties. Static or dynamic water. Normally, in the mine, you have dynamic water, right? It depends on the rain, it depends on the water passing through the cracks. So you all, probably, in most cases, you have dynamic water. So the water goes washing, washing the explosives, it can, it can change the, the properties. So you need to be aware of choosing the best explosive to be resistant to dynamic water. Density. That is not a very relevant property, but it's important to understand that when you pour ampho in a glass hole, you can get 0.8 density. 
considering that the density of the water is one, you see that aqua will float and then absorb the water and go down because it will change the, the density. But you need to select explosive in water conditions that can be pumped or uh, loaded in the blast holes and will not float. Sensitivity, this is one of the most important. An open detonator and lead aside, they are mo the most sensitive products. Be careful, use it, uh, follow the procedures. Right? Uh, in, in, in Orica plant in, in Lorena, in Brazil, this is the most dangerous activity. So, uh, the, the lead aside is a component of the detonator, you will see. Uh, you use generally uh, 200 uh, milligrams uh, in, in the detonator. Just in the, in the end of the detonator to fire and initiate a booster or explosive. 200 milligrams, uh, if the operator is uh, holding the detonator in, in, in his hand and it fires, that's a hand, a human hand. So, 200 milligrams is almost nothing, but very, very dangerous. The process in, in our plant, uh, there is a guy that moves with a, a small, a little car, and he walks. There's no equipment, he walks, and when he's going that, the plant stops. Everyone stop to let this guy do his job. If it falls directly, on the ground, it, it can detonate. Just for you to, to understand the sensitivity. Close detonators and excels are in the, in the second uh, place. Uh, a close detonator, the excel is the non electric detonator. For those who know, it's a shock tube. And in the end of the tube, the shock tube, you have the detonator. When the, with the finished product, you, you can safely, but it's not recommended to throw it. Uh, and and the, the most dangerous thing that can happen is a, a loaded blast hole, the shock tube for outside the standing, and a truck or a light vehicle passes, and the shock tube gets in the tire, we call snap, slap and shoot. Because when we, the tensile uh, strength, when it goes back and uh, uh, it can generate, uh, uh, it can initiate the shock tube. Leading lines, the, the same uh, non-electric here, but safer. And then you have the explosives. It's very difficult to to initiate uh, alcohol or an emotion uh, without the proper energy, okay? And the book, water-based explosives, comes in the end as the most safer product to use. Every explosive has a critical diameter, so, uh, if you have uh, a certain hole diameter, you need to choose an, ex an explosive uh, that don't have the same uh, critical diameter. Because uh, some explosives can fire properly starting from 5 inches plus hole, 6 inches plus hole. Some other explosives can start can initiate properly with two and a half inches diameter or one inch diameter. So be aware of picking the, 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 the right explosive. Take a look at the critical diameter. The recommended diameters when you use ANFO, port, 
76 millimeters. When you load it with ample loaders, uh, pneumatic, 25 millimeters, heavy ample, 89, bulk emotion, 76, back emotion, 22. So if you are using in very small diameters, it's recommended to use back emotion. If the diameter is uh, increasing, you can move to both emotion and, and for example, and heavy ample. Energy ratings, we, we discussed a little bit uh, about the RBS, the relative bulk strength. And there is another parameter that is the relative weight strength. When you compare a kilo of different explosives, you are talking about RWS. Alpha is always 100 as, as the base to be compared. And the other products uh, will be will compared to, uh, relatively to the energy of the alpha. And this, I, I prefer to use that, RBS, because we, uh, practically we will load the blast hole with one product or another product. We will talk about the same volume, not about the same kilo. When we talk about the same volume, we can prepare better blast designs by changing the further space and and movement and changing the the volume of explosives per cubic meter of, of rock, for example. This is the comparison of uh, just an example of the package emulsion compared to ample. In terms of fragmentation energy, ample is 100 and the package emulsion is 171. So a lot more energy here in terms of uh, shock energy. And in terms of gas energy, the heat energy, 100 to 148. So you have both parameters to compare the explosives with ample. For each product, you have information in the catalogs, in the internet, you can access the uh, uh, Oreca and, and, and find the catalogs for each product to explore a little, a little bit more. Oxygen balance. It's important to have um, good performance and not to generate uh, fumes. If the balance is correct, you should have these uh, components as a result of uh, a detonation. If you have more fuel than, uh, than nitrates, we say O2 negative, too much fuel, you have unbalanced uh, uh, fire, you will generate uh, uh, carbon, carbon, carbon oxygen. And this is the worst situation. When you have too much oxygen and, and fuel, fuel, you're generating uh, NOx gases. You can see in the blast, this is yellow to orange fumes. It's very toxic. So if, if something like this happens in your operation, wait for the gas to, to go. In both cases, you have poor performance in terms of uh, the total energy you can deliver to, 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 to break rock, right? but this is the worst scenario. Hot ground, maybe you find uh, it's important to be aware that the explosive can react to the, to the rock. Some explosives are, uh, can react to uh, uh, sulfates and in gold mines, in copper mines, if you have uh, pirate, I'm sorry for the, the name pirate, 
yeah? The geologist can help me. Pirate, yeah? It can, be, can, it can happen a reaction, a chemical reaction between the explosives and, and this type of rock, right? So the temperature can go up and up and up, so the blaster needs to be aware and see if something is wrong and some chemical reaction is happening in the blast hole to evacuate the area. Because it can reach such higher temperatures that the blast hole can fire and can be initiated. We have examples uh, not in this side of the Andes, in the, in the right side in Brazil, uh, in Venezuela, and, and here. I, I, I don't see records, but on the other side of the Andes, in Chile, Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, there are some cases of uh, reactive ground, so you need to be aware. You can take some samples of rock and we can test it to see if it's reacting with the explosion. So, all the blasters need to be aware of all these properties, uh, understand how they work, how they, they play, to uh, select the proper uh, explosives. Okay, we'll have a break now. Any questions, please feel free. Let's, let's talk about, about it if better and not myself and Victor. Okay, we're gonna start back at 11 o'clock. Okay, can we restart? Okay, first of all, if you can lose, I would like by show of hands, one hand, those who are vegetarians. Certificated clusters. Okay. Good. Now that we, we have talked about uh, the explosives property, let's talk a little bit about uh, the explosive selection. Okay. Typical explosives. You have in this in this uh, left hand side here the the name of the of the product and the commercial uh, brand here in the right hand side. Okay, uh, just for you to to understand when we say for this advantage, for example, we are talking about uh, a bulk emotion, water resistant. Okay. When we talk about Pentex, we are talking about cast boosters and so on. Basically, five families of products for dry holes, bulk dry holes, for wet holes, and also for dry holes, of course, the ample family, the package emotions, and the cast boosters. Package explosives. We have the Senatel family, Magnum and Ultrax. They have a slightly different density, a small difference in uh, the velocity of the of detonation. So when you read the, the, the term BOD, is the velocity of the detonation of the explosives. It's a, a good parameter to start selecting the explosives. Uh, in, in most of uh, the operations, you should select 
one explosives where the VOD is higher than the velocity of the propagation of the waves. So every rock has some properties. Uh, one of the relevant properties is the VP, is the velocity of propagation. When you blast a hole, and, and, and you can measure it, it with a seismograph, uh, with some triggers, it's quite easy. Uh, and you can check the velocity uh, of the propagation of the waves through the rock mass. Right? You can do it in the laboratory, but you can you will pick a small part of the rock. Probably we won't see the joint effects, water effects, uh, and then and when you do the the testing in, in the field, uh, you can measure it uh, considering the joints, the water, uh, changing the the the, the, the way the, the the wave moves through the rock. So you pick, you choose one explosives with the VOD higher than the VP of the rock, okay? It's a rule of thumb. And you see that this is important. In comparison uh, to Anfo, this product has twice the energy. Basically because of the chemical components uh, of the product. I don't know if many of you know, but it's, it's a story um, about an accident that happened in 1947. Uh, a boat full, uh, filled with ammonium nitrate uh, had uh, collided and the fuel oil of the, the well, uh, mixed with the ammonium nitrate and it generates uh, a big explosion. This is the, uh, a microscope view of the prill of the ammonium nitrate. So you see uh, it's porous, so it can absorb uh, pure oil. You have two types of of ammonium nitrate, um, one uh, heavy and one low, low density and high density. The high density has few pores, so it, it, it's not good to absorb the few oil. So it's more used in the agriculture business. Okay? And the low density is this brew and it absorbs oil, so it performs better. The mixture between ammonium nitrate and fuel oil is better, so you have a, a explosive uh, ammonium nitrate. This, we, we talked a little, a little bit about that. Uh, when you see in the graph the percentage of fuel oil, the Chemically speaking, you need 5.6% of fuel oil in the mixture to have the most energetic anthem. If you put more oil or less oil, you start facing uh, issues, generating fumes and, and uh, diminishing the, the performance of the blast. Right? So typically this graph represents the unfold energy versus sensitivity. Also you lose energy, you lose, you lose energy, but the sensitivity drops more significantly to a point where uh, it loses the ability to fire from one side to other side. It's not, a, not only about energy or, and fumes, but it's also about sensitivity. Too much oil or few uh, oil is, is uh, dangerous.
And then we have the emotion phase. When we mix uh, oxidizer fuels with emulsifiers, we can create uh, uh, the emotion, right? If the ammonium nitrate in a proper, in a right uh, concentration, uh, we use 82% of ammonium nitrate diluted in water, and then we mix. We, we add um, oxidizers and emulsifiers so the oil and the water can be joined together, right? Creating an emulsion. It's like um, margarine or uh, mineline. The, the consistency of the product is similar to that. And it generates water resistance and creates a higher energy product. Ampo and emotion blend. You can also mix ampo and the emotion phase and have some blends depending on the percentage of each product you put together. When you use more ampo than the emotion phase you have, you manufacture a happy ampo. Uh, for example, 80% of ample, 20% of emotion. You have a 20-80 blend, heavy ample. In Orica, we use this commercial name, four times. You remember AM, so more ample than emotion, the four times family. High heat, 170 energy. A lot of gas energy. Remember that ampo generates a lot of gas energy, and the emotion phase has more shock energy. And if the percentages are the opposite, for example, 80% of emotion phase and 20% of ampo, you have the 40s blend. It's, it needs to be pumped. This one you can pour, you can use in, in bags or in trucks. The trucks can do the mixture, or even a, a plant can do the mixture, and it can be poured or pumped in the, in the hole. And this one needs to be pumped, okay? Because of the, the consistency of the product uh, and the viscosity. This product is water resistant. This one has some water resistance. You need to check the, the manufacturer's uh, data sheet. For each blend you do, there is a time you, you can, uh, uh, the, the lead time changes. Okay? This one is, is more used uh, in, in the customers web that we are used to, to support. 80, 20, 70, 30 blend, more emotion than ample because of the wet conditions, basically. In, in the desert or in very dry zones, it's, it's very useful, this type of explosive, the heavy ample. In the US, uh, in Canada, in Mexico, Desert regions. High shock. There is a new product uh, in the market. Is the Plexi Gel? Uh, it's a mixture of emulsion and ammonium nitrate, but together with uh, EPS, uh, poly polystyrene. Find the polyesterin, right? Uh, it's, it's normal to, to find it when you buy uh, an electronic. When you open the box, you have the EPS there. It's very light, and you can mix to have a very uh, low density product. So, criteria to select. The, the explosive. 
Is there water in the operation? Which are the rock properties? Is it hard rock, soft rock, rock jointed? Whole diameter and depth. Uh, am I talking about 12 meters benches, 20 meters benches? There are some coal mines in Australia that uses 80 meters benches. Some underground operator, operation, they drill more than 100 meters. So, how do the explosive will behave in such uh, high pressure conditions? When you load a 10 meter blast hole, it's different than loading a, an 80 meter blast hole. The pressure of the column should, could affect the sensitivity and the performance in the bottom of the hole. Right? Energy requirements. What do you want to do? You need to cast, you need to throw the mud pile, you need a very good fragmentation, you need to take care of the walls. So you can design the powder factor. The powder factor is the amount of explosives per ton of rock, for example, or per cubic meter of rock. So when it, we say, uh, we talk about powder factor, we talk about grams of explosives per ton of rock, kilos of explosives per bench cubic meter of rock, things like that. Energy factor, how, uh, how much energy do you, do you have in that unit, uh, in megajoules, for example, kilo, and the distribution. Can I do a blast hole here? and the other blast hole 10 meters away, 10 meters far, will it work or not? We need to make uh, a different design, different distribution of the energy. Uh, when you put the, the, the explosive in the column, is there enough energy to, to, to fire in the standing zone, where you don't, if you don't have enough energy, maybe you need to be aware. Total explosives consumption. Do, do I have the amount of explosives necessary to do that blast? Energy matching, wet and dry holes, we talked about that. Shelf life, lift time, is the product okay? Is it good? Will it take too long to fire this blast and, and the explosive can lose the, the, the properties? Price and availability. It's more a commercial issue and a logistic, maybe. Influence of the diameter. We we're talking about uh, this with, with some of you here. Uh, you need to put a good distribution in, the, in all the, the, the hole. So you have uh, uh, energy uh, shocking all the parts of the rock. In, in the polygon, for example. This, this efficiency is related to the critical diameter. So be careful when using the, the, the explosives. Check if the critical diameter uh, is not passed. Right? If you are drilling uh, three inches blast hole, be sure that your explosive uh, is sensitive enough to be loaded in three inches. And this, we, we talked about this earlier, the minimum uh, diameter. So don't use heavy ammo if you are using uh, blast holes less than 89 millimeters. Don't, don't use the 40 series if your holes are smaller than 76 millimeters diameter. Okay? What do you think can happen here? One meter of water, your primer is in the bottom of the blast hole and you load with uh, um, What do you think can happen here? The blasters in the room. 
We will inspire. The initiation is bigger. You don't you, you only have water around. It's not contact with the explosive. <clears throat> what else can happen here? Unfolds and water. Is unfold water resistant? No. It will start absorbing water here. You use you use them for you do not. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. Exactly. Yeah. What about that? What happened here? bottom of the holes, right? So it's not good to put your primer in this area because it's contaminated. The explosive mixed with mud, water. So it's better, you have some options. It's better to drill uh, deeper so the mud will be here, for example, and the explosives will perform in the in the proper uh, grade, so you don't generate toes, for example, right? Or you can put the primer a little bit up in the in the column. And what about this? This is the staining zone, right? You leave it open when you load the. If you load a hole, you leave it open or you put some material. Generally, you can use uh, some, some rock from the process, <coughs> dust from the drilling rigs, the drilling process, the drilling operation. There are some plastic material, plastic bags, a lot of stuff you can, you can put in the hole to avoid uh, the stemming ejection and to confine the, the explosive. For dry hole, you can load uh, with a cartridge, a package uh, emulsion in the bottom of the hole and use unfold in the column. Do you have experience with that? Or do, you, or do you use this kind of design? The first or the second? Second. Why? You have a primer, a booster here, and a heavy ampoule. First, remember the difference of ampoule and heavy ampoule? Which one has more energy? Heavy ampoule. You can compare it the, the RPS, the relative pull strength. This heavy ampoule is, uh, is more energetic than the ampoule. And what about the initiation? When you use a primer in the bottom of the hole, you use, a, a, in this case, a booster, and in this case, a, a cartridge. Which one do you think is, has the better initiation? Primer, the booster, right? The, the velocity of the detonation is higher. Remember the pressure, the damage in the steel plate of the booster is more violent, more aggressive. It will initiate better the explosive zone. Uh, 
ample is 100% and heavy ample 170. You can check this uh, in, in every technical data sheet, okay? Don't need to remember it all the time. But here is a table for you to use as a comparison. If you use ample, you have the density. Be careful about floating. Uh, be careful about water. And you have 100% energy. This is the base for comparison. If you have a 4 ton advantage 30, what is it? It's a heavy ample. 30% of emotion phase and 70% of armful. You increased the density. Can you load it in wet holes? It won't float. The water density is one. Okay, it will go deep in the holes. But it's not that water resistant, right? There is still a lot of uh, ample content here and only 30% of emotion. So be careful with water. But it's 58% more energetic than the ample. Okay, if you have wet holes, good. If you have, sorry, dry holes, good. This is a 50 50 product. 50% ample, 50% emotion. The density increases, the velocity of detonation increases, and the energy for fragmentation also increases. Good. And then you have the Fortis family 70% emotion, 30% ample. Good including in wet conditions. This you can use in dry conditions. You have a lot of energy. You have a higher density. It won't float and the higher VOD. Okay? You can understand this as harder as harder the rock to uh, for fragmentation go this way. This is the flexigel family. Uh, it's not a, a big use in, in Latin America. We have some trials in, in Brazil, uh, some use in Chile, in Peru, but it's not big scale. It's only for very, very soft rock or, or, or some uh, wall controls. You can use these products to, to generate less damage in the walls, in the final wall. Right splitting or buffer line, but it's not that relevant. Okay? It's important to know that you can have a bulk product down to 0.5 density, very low density, very low energy. But see, take a look at the energy 33, I'm going to 100. Okay? So it's just for special applications. The flexi gel can reduce cost, but depends on the expanded polystyrene. The energy can be tailored, as we saw, there is a range of density and energy fit to, to the application. You can use for dry in water and wet passports. Just be, be careful of not floating. It's compatible with Fortis and Fortan products. You can load the column with two or different types of explosives in the same column. The Plexi Gel 100 has the same bulk strength as the and can replace Fortis Advantage 50 in the water holes, depending on the, on the type of rock.
But the limitation is the critical diameter. This product is applicable only to bigger diameters. Okay, in smaller diameters, it won't blast. It's not sensitive enough. For wet holes, you can choose the uh, package explosives, the Senatel Magna Frac, which have this density, the velocity of detonation varying from 4.5 to 5.5 uh, kilometers per second, and a good, good energy. Uh, for those who have experience with package emotion, you need to be uh, careful when you put the, the, the cartridge in wet holes. Yeah? Because it can, uh, it, it can be stuck by a piece of rock and not get to the bottom. You can have some water column and you cannot, you may not have a good connection in between one cartridge and the other and you can generate a misfire. The four times, the 50-50 product, it's okay to, to load, to use in, in uh, wet holes. And the 70% plant, 70% emulsion, 30% uncle, it's the best product, it's, it has the higher energy, good VOD, good density to be um, loaded. These products are loaded by trucks, and this one you can load manually. Uh, if we go back this slide in Dutch, um, which of the two options is more cost effective, the Magna Frac or the Cortex Center? It depends on the local prices. Right? You need to, to make a uh, balance. You can calculate the cost per tone. Uh, with this amount of energy, you have a certain burden and spacing, right? You have, uh, for example, a powder factor, let's fix it in uh, 500 uh, grams per ton of rock, let's say. If you use a more energetic product, you can expand a little bit your pattern, the burden and the spacing. So you mix the same powder factor, the same 500 grams per ton. So you drill less when you expand patterns. You use less explosives and less accessories. But maybe this product is a little bit, it is more expensive. So you need to make a good balance between this cost per ton when you use uh, more expensive products, but it allow you it allows you to expand pattern and reduce the overall cost of breathing and blasting. But always depend on the local prices, right? Good question. Heavy ampoules. When you have more ample than emotion in the mixture, it's recommended to use in deep water blast holes or in dry holes, right? If you have water, you need to pump it out of the blast holes and then load this type of explosive. And you don't have a long time for the explosive to be there. One day, maybe two days, and then you have to fire or else it will, it will absorb the water. This can, can vary depending on the, the price, on the market condition. 
but you can vary the energies and the densities. You can control uh, when when loading this type of product in the truck the, the, the blaster that is operating the, the, the MMU, the truck, he can control the density. So it, in soft rocks, it can uh, increase the amount of re the reagents and make the product uh, with a lower density. So we will reduce your costs or we use less, less kilos of the of explosives. And when the truck is moving to a, a harder rock zone, it can reduce the amount of this product and use different uh, quantities and increase the product density, increase the energy. So it's, it's really flexible when you are in a, in a blast area. Extra is the, the, the same family of the 40s and 4 ton. The extra has some extra energy. Right? Highest energy, increased sensitivity, increased slip time, so you can load it and, and let it uh, in let it load it for longer times, longer periods. Performance in difficult plus situations. And the energy is tailored to match ground conditions. Normally, if you have, if you take a look at the, the data sheets, all in average, seven days, one, one week. We have some examples of big blasts. Uh, we shot one, one blast in Vale Alobo in the north of Brazil. Uh, and it took a long time to load. Uh, it was almost uh, a thousand tons of explosives. Uh, it, it, it stayed for three weeks, four weeks, and then we, we didn't have problems. The, the, the emotion, not tanto. Uh, one more question. Um, let's say she said it's seven days, and you set the, the timer to warn the, the earlier, the delays will burn up and the explosion will be there. It won't work. You say that you see. You can't seven days with the, the surface uh, yeah. detonators tight, uh, already tight. No. Um, yeah, the 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 some the old delay, some the old delay, right? The finish load is the old, sleep time is fast, and then the time to set this um, blast up. The top is born up, and the bottom will go. Probably the detonator will go, but the the, the product that stop, the, the explosive suffers more and quickly than the detonators. Probably your detonator and your booster will fire, but the explosive can be damaged or desensitized, and nothing will happen. You you won't see nothing. Maybe a small movement. Why I asked the question? Because I had an experience with it already. The capo, but the, uh, the cap and the, 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 the booster go, but the powder, it didn't go. Mm -hmm. So we had to flush it out the hole and redrill the place and load it back again. It yeah. Go. yeah, you lose, you lose everything. You have the, the drilling and the explosive. Time and money. Time and money, of course. You need to do everything again. Thank you. And it, it happens. It happens more than, than, than we, we expect. It happens. This is something related to, to your question. Uh, patterns. Do you use this term pattern or use another term? Pattern. Burden facing you, you have the blast blasting patterns, right? 
Now, if you use, if you have a dry hole, you use a hole. If, if the condition changes to a wet hole, you can use magma dry. But if your parameter is to spend the same kilos of products in the blast hole, you will have this type of effect. You put some kilos, the same kilos of uh, of magna trap here, because the density of Vanco is 0.8, and the density of this explosive is 1.15, so you have a bigger stem here, a zone of rock that won't be damaged by any explosives here. So, what can happen here? Oversized, big blocks. No energy here, right? And if you use the advantage family the, and you put the same stemming, it's not saying that you use the same kilo. You use the same volume, okay? We standardize with the stemming height. What will be happening here different than here? More, more fragmentation, more energy here in the same volume than here. So what could you do with this product? Is if you replace ample by the emotion, what can you do with the pattern? So you have the same amount of energy per tone of rock. This underblasted, oversized, overblasted, high powder factor, right? Expand the pattern, reduce your total cost, and keep the same fragmentation levels or better. Match energy and cost. Always, always think about that. Specialty explosive summary. Fortan, sorry, it's missing an R. Fortan advantage is a 50 50 blend. Dewater holes or dry holes. Fort is deep, deep holes. We didn't talk about that because it's very specific to big coal mines and uh, underground operations. With 60 meter plus holes or 100 meter plus holes. Fort is clear. It's a family of the forties with some other com chemical components to reduce fumes. If you need higher and higher lead time, there are some other products. Marathon. Who run, they understand. You need to be that. Flexi gel, low density, low energy. If the application requires very low energy, there is a, a product you can use. And for hot and reactive ground, there are also different products. If you are facing issues, uh, relevant issues with hot and reactive ground, there is a solution also. And for the eclipse for reactive ground also. Very soft rock. Plexigel, high gas, low density, deep. Very deep holes, or is deep. Fume reduction, or is clear. It's not necessary to use for this clear. If you have an ample with a good energy balance, an oxygen balance, good mix between AM and fuel oil, you have a good product. You won't generate fumes. Hot ground, if you face up to 100, 150 degrees Celsius temperature, 
hit the blast hole, the OL. Reactive ground is different uh, from, uh, from uh, hot ground. The, the ground can, can be not too hot, but can be reactive, depending on the type of rock. Causes of fumes. Water. If you use a no uh, water resistant product in water, you may have fumes. Uh, in spite of detonating, the explosive may deflate. Is it right? Deflate? When it burns in a lower temperature? Critical diameter, damaged column. Also here, uh, if you have, uh, if you are blasting in a, in a very jointed uh, rock mass, the rock movement, when one hole moves, the other hole can move, and you lose the, connect the connectivity in inside the explosive column. So you may uh, have the lower part firing and the upper part, upper zone, not firing. Blast design can affect can, uh, the, the generation of fumes, the sensitization, chemicals, reactions, chemical reactions with fines. The product is out of specification, the formula is not good. Geology can affect. Take a look at that, uh, to complement your, your question. Unfold. As soon as possible. Load and fire. Package. One year. In hold. It's a lot of, has a lot of water resistance because of the plastic, right? Depending on the conditions, the power gel can be there for several weeks, but as quick as possible fire. Flexi gel, three weeks. The Pentex boosters, several months. So this, this is the case. The booster fired, but the explosive column didn't fire. The detonators, the main risk to be a, to, to have uh, the shock tube, detonating cords, slipping in the hole for long periods is the reaction with fuels, uh, other other products, chemical products that can be in the blast hole. Yeah, during the drilling process, there are a lot of uh, uh, products that that can be dropped in the, in the hole can react with the plastic, with the metal of the, the tube. So basically, this was a, an overview of how to select the product. Uh, maybe we can do some exercises later or today or tomorrow. We can practice a little bit. Uh, we can create a, a condition of geology and you uh, can do an exercise about how to select the best option and how to design, right? But maybe it's relevant for you, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, I have a question with respect to the selection of the explosive. You, you, you mentioned the velocity of detonation, and it ranges from 4,500 meters per second right up to 5,500 meters per second. Uh, using the wave equation, uh, you would be able to calculate the transmission energy within the rock column. Um, and I think they will have to be in the form of P wave and S wave. Uh, 
could you say in terms of the, um, the two types of energy, the heat and the, um, the compression energy, um, how it relates to the P wave and the S wave, and then also uh, one of the things that happens when you do a design, uh, you put so much, um, you talk about bulk, relative bulk, then uh, RBS, uh, but let's look at RWS and you have a weight in kilograms of the explosive. How can you calculate the total energy produced so as to know the impact and how of, of transmission because you when you want to know the transmission energy within the the, the, the raw material over a certain distance and I want to find out if you can just explain that again. There are there are some uh, form formulations and form some calculations that correlate RWS and RBS. So if you have one information, you can calculate other. We can uh, present the formula uh, later. Is it clear? And also, the, the P wave is faster than the S wave, right? So we compare the shock, and there are some field tests and there are some uh, computer models to define the amount of energy uh, in each type of explosives, the shock and, and the gas energy. It's difficult to measure in field tests. So we use a lot of information uh, chemical from chemical calculations. Uh, in, practi in practical terms, uh, we use the, the P wave to compare with the velocity of detonation. And the VOD of the explosive uh, typically needs to be higher than the P wave, right? This is the, the absolute energy of the ample, okay? Uh, 900 kilocalories per kilo is the absolute energy uh, liberated. This is the chemical reaction. I'm not a, a specialist in, in chemistry, but uh, this is the formula. And in a good reaction, you only generate uh, gases. CO2 is, is bad for the environment, but it's not toxic. Uh, it, it's toxic in, in higher concentrations, but uh, water and nitrogen and energy, right? And this is the correlation between the uh, absolute energy and the uh, weight, weight in, in, in kilos. And this is how you calculate the relative weight strength. You have the strength of your explosives and you divide by the strength of the output. And this depends on the density. This, the ABS depends on the density of the explosive. In the case of ample, it's 0.81 plus uh, times the, the liberated energy. So you have the ABS, in this case for, for ample, in a perfect reaction that is difficult to to achieve in field. This is the calculated uh, energy. Okay, and then you can, you have this formula to compare. If you only have the RWS information, 
you can calculate the RBS by using the density. This also can change sometimes depending on the product you use. If you use a truck, the density depends on the operator to control it. The right use of the chemical components can increase or reduce the density. So from one bus hole to another, if the operator changes all the time the control, you have different energies in each glass hole. Okay. This is part of the mathematics and the, the theory behind it. That's a question. Uh, I presume you are okay with the product that are being used in the uh, which products? Uh, the, the products that are being used in the quarry. They are your products, right? Yes. And, uh, do you have an assessment of how these products perform? Yes. Do you have a good assessment? It's good. Uh, we have some measurements. How, how we can assess the, 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 uh, the performance of the product? There is one uh, equipment uh, uh, to measure the VOD. I don't know if, if all of you is uh, know this equipment, but um, it's a, an equipment with um, a line. Yeah. Victor is prepared. Well, why I ask the question is that uh, the geology we might not be able to control because that is what nature can do. But I think in many cases, operators are going for more high power stuff that is. <laughs> Causing a lot of uh, breakages and fractures created within the rock wall, and that creates even more difficulties for them in terms of you know having their glass inside and getting the maximum of it. Mm -hmm. So based on that, yeah, about the product they currently use mm -hmm. and whether you agree with uh, the practice of the yeah in in, in the power business. Uh, uh, a lot of experience in Brazil. It's a very important uh, market. It has big cities, big population. So we need to build houses, bridges at the time. Um, we measure first to check the, the quality of the product and the accuracy of the operators. We can measure the VOD in the field. So with this equipment, you install it, you put uh, 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 yeah, the, the, the. you connect the wires in the booster in the first glass hole you, you fire, the first one you can put in another one and then you have uh, it connected to the, to, the, to the monitors when it fires, it opens you connect together in short circuits. Then when it fires, it opens the circuits. So the equipment creates this graph. Depending on the angle of this graph, the higher angles means the higher VODs. And the lower uh, angles, lower low VODs. So this is one important parameter to check if the product is performing according to the, the technical data sheet, for example. Uh, we can measure fragmentation by taking some pictures with uh, some references and then, and then checking if the fragmentation is uh, consistent. If you do not change anything in your glass design, but your fragmentation changes dramatically from one to another, then you can investigate deeper what's going on. Um, and there are also some ways of monitoring the quality of the walls. You mentioned uh, damage. Too much energy can damage the walls and, and make it difficult for the next cycle drilling, loading, firing, excavating. Um, there are some tools, some scanners 
that you can measure the quality and the uh, angles of the walls and also the amount of uh, overbreak uh, damage that you cause to the rock. Right? That there are some, some measurements that we can, after, after we will uh, show some pictures of uh, fragmentation measuring and wall control. We're going to be talking about drilling cost optimization as well, so we're going to talk about all the, uh, how we're going to be measuring, measuring all the outcomes, fragmentation, VOD, so maybe tomorrow or, or when we, we cover it. So I think we're gonna have a break for lunch now and what time we can in one of our plus you're gonna get back to the to the train. <laughs> We have some, some interesting materials, some types of explosives and, and techniques used in the 